I'm Nan Simonson. I am making a carrot salad that I learned to make when I was, what, 16, 17 years old. And I'm making it the same way with some exceptions. And I'll tell you what those are in just a bit. But I just love the texture. And when I serve it to people, they like it as well. So I am whole food plant-based. I wrote Aging Powerfully. I am a health and wellness coach with a lifestyle medical practice going on three and a half years. I've been working with groups and with individuals to build health based on the pillars of lifestyle medicine. One of which is the belief that a whole food plant-based dietary style is the best for us and for the planet and I adopted a whole food plant-based diet three and a half well actually gosh it'll be four years in September so yeah going on four years now and um, I'm healthier than ever at 71 I feel that I can um, do things I couldn't do uh, four or five years ago and maybe even beyond that. I've taken up running this morning. I did a 10K, 6.2 miles, getting ready for a half marathon that I'll be doing in October. And I believe that the antioxidant effect and phytonutrient, phytochemical, polyphenol effect of plants make all the difference. So that's the end of my thing. Um, let me get on to the carrot salad. This is so easy. I wanted to show you this. Do you know what this is? Let me show you. This is a Vitamix. You can call Vitamix and ask what bases will accommodate their new um, their new, I'll call it food processing system. And um, I had to get a new base because mine didn't, but I really wanted a food processor that would fit right onto the Vitamix and that was easier to clean than my um, Cuisinart was. And man, this is great. It comes right off of this base and you saw that that base comes right off of the um, motor. So I already, because I wanted to save you the ear damage, I should do that all the time, but I don't, um, shredded this carrot. Now I could have used, because this is what I was taught, how many years ago is that? If I'm 71 and I learned it at 16 or 17, man, oh man, that's 50, what, three years ago? 54, I don't know, 53. Um, I'm gonna save these little pieces. What I would have done if I'd been thinking about this and disassembled it earlier is I will do what I would do, what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to take these and either chomp on them as an appetizer for dinner. Maybe we'll do that. The other thing I've done is I simply chop them and put them right in the carrot salad. So I'll hold on to that but take out the shredding blade. This, this unit comes with two blades, two shredders, a fine shred, this is a fine shred, and a thick shred, more like a, um, a, a julienne, but they're rounded, so they're not squared like a real julienne. And then there's slicing blades with each of them, and you can get a narrow and a thick slice. I really like it. Okay, so. I'm going to get this out of the way now. I just wanted to show you. I saw this at an event, a conference of the National Health Association. I was hooked. I came right back home and I bought it. So I shredded a, a just under a pound and a half of carrots. If and, and I did count. That was about eight medium carrots. Um, if you use less, you're going to get a carrot salad with more moisture, more juice. 
If you use more, you're going to get more volume, but a much drier salad. I really like to have moisture in the salad. As a matter of fact, I believe that when I learned this, she only used one, um, one pound of carrots, and I'm using, this is just under one and a half, and when you peel it, it's even a little less than that. And you may think, oh, but I don't want to peel. I, I really like the nutritional value of the skin. I agree. However, this has such a bright orange and clean look. When you shred with the skins on and the skins are kind of more brown, it just doesn't look as pretty. And so you get to make that decision. That's one of the differences. Um, I tried it once without peeling it and it just didn't appeal to me visually and we eat with our eyes. This is a 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. Um, Dole makes one and several other companies make them with 100% pineapple juice. There's no sugar here. This is just crushed pineapple. There was a time I couldn't find crushed pineapple easily. For example, you can go to a lot of supermarkets and find pineapple tidbits or pineapple chunks, but you can't necessarily always find crushed pineapple. And you always want it, regardless of whether or not it's the tidbits or the chunks, you want to get it with the pineapple juice. You don't want uh, a sugary syrup that's well you don't want to eat that and, and you you um, don't want to work with that for this salad way 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 too sweet and then and I, I use this big bowl simply because it gives me the ability to toss it well so I'm sort of breaking up the pineapple I'm gonna do something I've never done before so don't think well man you've given me a recipe for one thing and then you're doing another. <laughs> yes, I am, <laughs> but I've never done this before. The crushed pineapple, oh, so getting back to the chunks, if you buy it chunks and you're going to use a food processor to shred the carrot, and again, you could have used a box grater. Um, what was I gonna say about that? Oh, I put the can, 20 ounce can of chunks in the, food processor with the S blade, chunked it up, not quite as finely, meaning, uh, um, I'll call it crushed it, but basically chopped it up, not quite as finely as crushed pineapple. And I kind of like those bits of pineapple in there. So I cut up a pineapple yesterday, almost overripe, and it's, oh, so, it was so golden and so sweet that I just took a couple of pieces, chopped them up with a little bit of their juice, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make this carrot salad extra juicy and with some extra pineapple. That's not what you have to do. That's not what I've ever done, and I've made this now for over 50 years. So the other thing that I was taught was to use coconut, but, and just shredded coconut as opposed, or, or flaked but not the teeny, teeny little, um, some of it is almost um, uh, almost grated, and it, it just disappears too much in here. The shreds are actually the nicest because you actually get some mouthfeel there, and this is not quite a shred. Uh, the coconut, keep in mind, coconut oil, and that's what's in coconut, is saturated. It's not the best fat for us, even though some people promote coconut oil, MCT oil, and make it sound like this big nutritional uh, superfood. Um, but I'm using the coconut because I like the flavor. I'm not worried about the little bit of oil that's in here, but it's the highest calorie item that I have in here. This little bit, I shouldn't even tell you, you, you won't use it. And I happen to use the Trader Joe's unsweetened, and that's the, the other thing that I changed. She used sweetened. Her, the, the, the person who taught it to me, her name is Sarita, Sarita. Um, she 
rationalized that the sweet of the coconut was the only thing that we used to sweeten the carrot salad. I've learned to like it without the extra sweet. But one quarter cup, this is about a half a cup. One quarter cup of coconut is 220 calories. And that is like, um, it's 21 grams. And this is what you have to do to figure it out. If you look at the package, it says 27%. That's not so. 21 grams of fat at nine calories a gram is a little bit more than 183 calories of fat. The entire color count of that amount is 220. So what percent of fat is that? 90% fat? That's coconut for you. But I like it. It has its value. It is plant-based. And I'm going to trust that the amount I have is not that much and I'm willing to have that caloric density. I don't count calories. I, I don't even know for sure how much I eat a day in terms of calories um, because everything I eat is whole food plant-based with an eye on the what we call the whole foods that are to the left of what what some people call the, the line, the red line, the black line, and that is the whole foods that are 600 calories or less a pound, which is almost all of them. All the greens, all the vegetables, all the tubers, all the starchy vegetables, all the fruit, um, all the legumes, beans, and all the grains, all of them. 600 calories or less a pound, unless you go up to um, avocado, which is seven or 800 a pound. And then you go up to seeds and nuts, which go to 1,000, 1,200, 1,400 a pound. You can eat all you want of 600 or less, lose weight, be full, be healthy, but it's nice to have the seeds because those are our omega-3 source if we're whole food plant-based. And so I still add, when I make, my whole food plant-based recipes, I won't add oil. I add oil to nothing. Why have that extra fat that is processed as opposed to part of a food, it's better for our body if it's part of the food, like nuts. Um, so I'll have seeds and nuts, but I watch that. And if I gain a couple pounds, those are the things that get cut back because the other foods, I'll continue to have what I want of. Uh, but especially the greens and vegetables, heavy, heavy, heavy on those. And then I'm adding a handful of walnuts. Walnuts are the highest in omega-3. So this is a nutritional or quite a nutritious dish. And then the other thing I'm changing. Now she likes slivered almonds. I like uh, chopped walnuts. So what I put in here did you see me put this in? And I don't even know if I talked about it. Um, raisins could be the black raisins, the um, golden raisins. This happens to be uh, currants as opposed to raisins. Why do I choose currants? I get them from a national natural food store. Comes in this little container. Sometimes, I was going to say sometimes you could get them as bulk, but that's really unlikely because... All raisins kind of stick together when you're trying to buy bulk it's like a sticky clumpy thing um, seven dollars a pound this is almost a half a pound and they're I'll open it up to show you they're tiny and this is why that's one current one little current Woo, there went the current on the floor um, Actually, that's more like one. That might have been one that was all stuck together. They're, they're a tiny little, that the genus, I'm a master gardener and spent decades as a landscape designer. The genus is Ribes, Ribes. Um, and they're just a little berry and then they dry and that's the, that's the current. Uh, okay, so I use currants because they're so small that you get more per bite. Um, and you're sure to get a current in every bite. Okay, and then I added the walnuts and I buy, um, I prefer organic, but I'm not that worried about shelled nuts. And this is baking pieces. 
And if you're using nuts to bake, by baking pieces, it's less expensive by far than buying, for example, walnut halves and then chopping them up. And then this whole thing, it could be eaten like this, but there's something missing if there is. She, Sylvia, I mean Sarita, added mayonnaise, just a big old scoop of mayonnaise. For years, I added, because when I went whole food plant-based, I was not going to use any animal product at all, and I haven't, going on for years. This is reduced fat veganaise. If you ever had anything like um, Miracle Whip, that's what this reminds me of, kind of sweet, but Miracle Whip, as well as mayonnaise, as well as veganaise, even though this is vegan and, oh my gosh, that's healthy, healthy herb. No, it's not. It just means there's no animal stuff just because it's vegan. Um, that's why I say whole food plant-based because that's as close to nature as possible and that's real food. Well, there's a bunch of stuff in here. It's not bad. This is organic, but um, the, the first ingredient is water. The second is oil. In other words, I'm eating oil when I eat vegan A's. And when I started thinking about that and realized that, I thought, you know what, I don't wanna do that. It's half the calories, less than half the calories of what mayonnaise would be. So the oil is kind of um, ex um, bulked up by that water to the degree that you can have twice as much as th of this for the same as mayonnaise, but I don't want the oil anymore. <laughs> So I'm using my own, um, what I call tofu sour cream, tofu mayonnaise, and it's on my channel. I believe I have it called tofu uh, sour cream because I put lemon juice with the silken tofu and then I add some garlic powder. It's granulated garlic, granulated onion. And I'm gonna put that in here. Even though the onion and the garlic's kind of odd with a slightly sweet salad, I'm not worried about that. But the value of it is that it adds, because there is fat naturally in soy, it adds that creaminess that I think gives this a really nice flavor, a, a nuance um, that slightly, it gives you a slightly white-ish sauce, but you'll see what I mean, not a lot. Well, what's the value of this over this? The amount of fat is neg negligible. That almost didn't come out. Um, we're looking at six grams of fat for the entire container, and it is tied to the soy, but it's also a protein source. The entire container has, let's see, where's my protein? Has 12 grams of protein, So, and it's the soy, protein and soy has been found to be very protective against breast cancer, testicular cancer, and um, we're being advised now as opposed to told, be told to stay away for, from soy because of the phytoestrogens. We're being told to run to soy by, by um, obstetricians, by um, oncologists because it's now realize that the phytoestrogen uh, is, is actually binding to the estrogen receptors that would otherwise bomb our body with our endogenous estrogen, and that's where we start getting problems when the levels are high, but also all the estrogens and the foods that we eat if we're still eating animal foods, like the milk and the dairy and the yogurt and the, the, the cow body, and on and on. So I'm putting, I'm gonna put three, <laughs> I think that was called four, and dollops of my um, soy yogurt, I'll call it, not yogurt, but soy. Um, and this is, this is, I like Mori New. You can find this at the grocery store where you have your Asian foods but it's not refrigerated. It's on the count, the, the um, shelf, and I always get the organic. So silken tofu, always get the organic. I do not want um, anything to do with um, genetically modified soy. Okay, 
uh, or or soy that's not organic because then they spray the heck out of the crop. Okay, now what's happened, you'll see that it's just gotten a little white. Not, not really white. It just sort of softens the 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 sauce let me see if i can show you it's not a sauce it's but you see it's it instead of well you can see it's just kind of creamier looking and and interestingly enough that little bit of something that softens that pineapple flavor makes it so delicious that you just want to keep eating more and more let me see Mm. That is so perfect. Gosh, that's good. You could add more if you want it creamier. If you don't care about the oil, you can add vegan eggs. You could add mayonnaise if you eat that stuff, but yeah. anyway, okay. So I'll show you this beautiful thing plated, gorgeous color. We're having our taco bar night, of course, all vegan. And I can't wait to have my carrot salad on the side. Such a refreshing flavor. I wanna show you something. This is what I got out of shredding these carrots, but also I'm about to do another video on a chunky lentil soup. And I needed three big carrots for that. And so I shredded, the, not shredded, excuse me, peeled them all. Would I throw this away? Oh, never. And you can see what I mean by the brownie. And they're just kind of brown and not pretty, whereas this is bright orange. Um, so I peel, washed them and then peeled them and they are organic. And then I would normally add this to my bag of frozen, vegetable bits that are left over from any time I um, cook. There's always vegetable bits. There's no room in there for this. So I've taken that out of the freezer and I'm about to start an eight quart stock pot for my soup. I took out of my freezer two one quart frozen containers of my stock that now I'm going to be replacing plus some for the, the lentil soup. So look for that. It will be posted probably a week later and it's chunky lentil, um, chunky lentil soup. It's a Instapot. Um, it's cooked in the Instapot. Uh, although of course it could be cooked on the stove and it's just wonderful. I made it for some people for a recent retreat that I was in charge of making all of the dinners for, for these omnivores. <laughs> and they got nothing but plant-based dinners. And they all loved the soup and had some for lunches after that and everything. So I'm gonna make it and then I'll photograph it. So I hope you're having a great day. I know I am and thank you for paying attention. Help me spread the word. Aging powerfully is something we do with lifestyle choices. We move every day. We commune with our friends and community every day. Things like that actually make a difference in the way we feel physiologically. We sleep well, we prioritize sleep and reduce stress with methods like yoga and meditation and, and deep breathing. And we aim for as many whole foods that are plant-based as possible. It's processed, say no thank you, I'll take an apple instead. <laughs> or my carrot salad instead. This is whole food. <laughs> well, the pineapple's been processed in that it's cooked in the can, but that was all. See ya, bye bye.